This video is sponsored by Bityard. With over 400 cryptocurrencies to choose from on their spot exchange, dozens of USDT pairs for futures trading, perpetual coin futures, trade commodities like gold, silver and oil, Forex and major indices like Nasdaq. You can buy crypto from Bityard with over 50 different fiat currencies using Visa, Mastercard, Google or Apple Pay. If you like, you can use their copy trade facility, follow other traders who will execute trades on your behalf or become a copy trader yourself. So if you want a bit of that, click the link in the description. Hello everybody, welcome back. Let's have a look at Bitcoin, short term, long term, and we're going to talk about the potential of the recession, which looks pretty much in the bag. Uh, but the difference between a recession of this form and the one that we saw in like 2008, for instance, um, is it's a completely different kettle of fish. All right. So first of all, let's recap on some of the most important aspects of the Bitcoin chart. So where are we? Bears Bitcoin. Here we go. Bitcoin. So we'll take off this and we'll just refer to, first of all, what I consider to be the fair value for Bitcoin. This is your log scale bear market end bear market end covid dump uh, reaccumulation and here we go we tagged it last week and uh, we're starting to have a bit of a reaction from it right now so when we say fair value i'm not saying bottom i'm saying fair value i'm saying look at this chart this is a log scale we go up and 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 we go up Hang on a minute. I've gone up way more times than the chart represents right now. And um, that's because that is where I see it going, right? So when we talk about fair value, I'm talking about all those people that used to contact me back in the olden days where things were going up only. And they say, look, should I, uh, should I, should I remortgage my house and buy into it? No, you shouldn't. No, no, you shouldn't. No, you shouldn't. The time has passed for you to buy Bitcoin at this stage. And um, you shouldn't do anything with your house. Just just chill out and live in it. All those people now, obviously, they're not contacting me anymore. Hopefully, they didn't sell the house. I did tell them not to. <laughs> but uh, where, when they should, when should they be contacting me? Probably now. Should I be buying Bitcoin? I'd, I'd probably say, well, I'll tell you what, I am. And this is the reason. So first of all, we've got a fair value price where we've come down and tags and so far are hanging above it. We have had moments where we're below it. Black Swan event, specifically Black Swan event. But other than that, two bear markets went through and we basically hit it and hovered above it. And it was only on that Black Swan event, which again, you, you, you can't account for Black Swans. They do happen. They can push it down further. We have come down further than it in the past, but it's not very common. Most of the time we remain above it. So that is your Bitcoin chart, fair value. You see where I'm coming from. Doesn't necessarily mark the bottom, just for, just uh, just a fair value. So we'll turn it off the log scale. We'll get rid of that for the moment. It's just going to be confusing. We'll turn on my indicators over here and we'll zoom into uh, the previous bull market, stroke bear market, reaccumulations and where they hit. So here we see at the end of 2015, uh, the absolute lows, although we did have wicks down below it, uh, we more or less reaccumulated around the 200 simple or 200 exponential moving average, right? On the weekly. So there we go, marking effectively a bottom, okay? And there you had it, all the way up, all the way into another bull market, all the way up. So this is a bit messy, I'm sorry about this. All the way up, all the way up. And then we had another massive, huge bear market with a crash that basically hit our 200 simple moving average straight through the exponential, uh, which actually turned to a resistance, but supported on the 200 simple. So bang, bang resistance 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 bang bang resistance resistance huge massive breakout and this is the area that i was looking for and this is where i went hard and heavy into bitcoin 2019 just a little extra confirmation that they were able to do it, it looked good we were reclaiming areas and there you go we we, we moved on so where are we right now? So first of all, we've, we've already hit and sliced through and uh, and uh, rebounded from the 200 exponential moving average. The 200 simple is still hanging around down here. Currently at this week right now, it is a, uh, about 22,000. And we, we just measure this trajectory of this moving average just, just briefly and, and basically. And we can have a look at what this could be for a support and what the prices would be over time. Because again, as long as we remain above it, this will continue to go up. It's the nature of a moving average. We've already seen how relevant and significant it was. Even down here in the March crash, we, st we still managed to stay above it, closing above it. We had wicks below it, but we still stayed above it, closed above it, reaccumulated above it, and went back up again from it. So we think about this on a weekly basis. In fact, let's just turn it to a monthly. It'll be easier to see it on a monthly, just to, to give an idea of where, which direction it's going to go. So currently, we're in at around 22,000. Next month, we're about 23,000 month after that about 24,000 uh, month after that about 25,000 so a month after that 26,000 so it doesn't matter how long you expect us to stay around this rough fair value uh, which again the fair value is on a log scale and it's it's not going to get you down to the penny uh, but it's still a decent area to think about buying even though it might not mark the bottom if you're looking really to try and spot a bottom based on historical uh, relevance 
trying to catch it a bit closer to the penny, then you'd be looking at that for a moving average, uh, which is held again, you know, over a 10 year period pretty well, about a nine year period. We've also come down to hit this 50 exponential moving average on the weekly as well, uh, which again, it does have some relevance to it, but it's not perfect. We came down to it around here. This is your March, uh, sorry, your, your more or less your your end of bear market we, where we reaccumulated around the 200 exponentials. So we saw that we did reaccumulate lower than that, and then we went to town afterwards. This is your bear mar uh, th this is your consolidation into your March crash where we floated above it. We never closed below it. And again, we've had a very strong reaction from it already. Again, could could simply mark the bottom obviously it could mark the bottom you know people still thinking that we could come down lower uh, and uh, I'm all up for it coming down lower as well I'll be buying it there as well don't you worry about it the fair value still remains around that currently around that 27,000 uh, the 200 exponential obviously around that on the weekly the 50 exponential on the monthly is around 26,000 uh, uh, there's nothing really on the daily of significance but we'll get back to the weekly um, so yeah it's all floating around that mid uh, to potentially lower 20s but not lower than 20 it would take one hell of a calamity event to take place uh, and people are, people are talking about recession and what that means and, and what it is and they right, you know refer to previous recessions and stuff so let's have a little think about the previous recession and what, what, what that was similar to on the Nasdaq right so we'll use the Nasdaq for this is this, is this the right Nasdaq chart uh, um, no, no, this one is. So, uh, whoa, 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 slow down there, mate. Right, so let's have a look. So this is where we are on the NASDAQ. We've done TA on that. I am looking for it to come down lower, definitely. I would very much appreciate it if it came down to around these levels, the pre-pandemic highs, but that's neither here nor there. So what we're looking at here is a bubble pop due to the dot-com uh, dot com bubble, bubble pop, I can't get my words out, dot-com bubble pop. Uh, and that was one hell of a beast mode, right? That's different. That is a bubble if we ever saw one. What we saw here, this is your recession, uh, 2007 to 2009. And what we saw is things started to slow down. And then finally, banks began to fail. Banks failed. Banks failed, right? Huge bubble pop in the housing market. Again, it is a bubble pop and a failure of banks. Now, there's safeguards in place. They're not rigorous, but they're better. We do not expect to see anything in the same way as that kind of recession. That was a bubble pop. And that was a bubble pop. Are we looking at a bubble pop now or are we looking at a restabilization of price? Yes, there could easily be a recession. There probably is. And they're going to give us that next month. Obviously, you need two quarters of negative GDP to get a recession by, you know, brand it a recession. We're probably going to get that next month. And what's that going to mean? Nothing really, I would say. Nothing really, because think, think about what this recession is and how it's how it's come about. What it means, it's inflation coupled by supply chain issues. Because we're a global economy, for better for worse. You know, it's got its pros. When it works, it works really well. When things don't work, obviously it upsets everybody. So China locking down everybody affects everybody. War in other countries, especially major um, uh, a, a fuel and petrol and or gasoline or whatever you guys call it, but effectively energy. Um, and and grain and fertilize it that affects everybody we're in a global economy if there's an upset in the global economy it upsets your economy it upsets everything so it's different we're not looking at bubble pops we're looking at slowing of growth we're looking at restabilization of charts we're not looking for huge capitulative crashes here we're just looking at basically slow grinding out uh, approaching lows on on charts that would be more appealing now, part of all of this is obviously that the, the main gauge outside of GDP is inflation and inflation obviously reaching higher for the UK this month. We're going to have to see how it goes for uh, the, the US. But the figures last month were that actually it's started to slow. So inflation isn't as bad as it was the previous month, although it still goes up. So it was 1.2% higher in March and it was only 0.3% higher in April. So if we continue with this, plus with everything that has been applied uh, with Federal Reserve Monetary Policy for effectively uh, raising rates and quantitative tightening, then I would expect actually inflation in the US to, uh, to have started to slow and actually go down. So it's already slowing, it's slowed to a, a decent extent. I expect to see it going down next month. That would coincide with the same time that the recession will be branded so, oh, recession. But actually, you know, the, the main criteria that leads into that recession has, uh, has started to turn a corner or I expect to start to see a corner. And so what you'll see is 
uh, what I expect to see is uh, by the time everybody hears the word uh, recession, uh, the majority of the pain is over for the markets and the markets will bottom around those levels and start to uh, reaccumulate uh, and probably start to go up. Uh, same as they did when uh, everything was all the end of the world over here. So the end of the world, you know, banks failing, everything failing, you know, bailouts, you know, oh, austerity. And look, <coughs> I was around, I remember finishing university going, well, this is the worst time to finish uni. <laughs> this is terrible. Uh, for, you know, for the average person, it was terrible. But what was it for the market? It effectively marked a bottom, didn't it? it effectively marked a bottom. And uh, as everybody was flapping around, as they should do, because it affects normal people in their normal lives, we find a bottom and we find an entry point for an up only chart and we continue to go up only for ages for ages continuing to go up, up only for ages so we're looking at something similar but we're not looking at a huge calamity event like what we saw with that dot com bubble because obviously that was a dot com bubble bubble i can't say bob bu bu bubble today and we're not looking for a financial collapse we're not looking at a financial collapse we're looking at just a standard recession which is a decline in gdp and we all know why it's happening it's not like we go oh well there's you know we're over leveraged with houses and uh, oh we're not looking at going, oh your people are just buying stocks and commodities like you know crazy because of um yeah, you know, because it's attached to the internet and it's got a, 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 an address. Yeah, you know, it's not like any of that. Uh, what we've seen is financially driven uh, incentive to buy stocks because of um, the the money printing and all that. And now what we see is that coming back down to earth uh, alongside some extra issues with global supply chain. It's effective what it is. So you know, whether it be war or lockdowns, it's just supply chain issues and that that just. It slows growth down of course because we're a global economy so we know and we understand the reasons why it's happening of course there could be easily some more downside like i say for bitcoin we could be looking for another 30 percent no big deal what's 30 percent between friends that could happen 200 simple moving average that's around 22 this this uh, this this week probably will be uh, creeping up to around 25 26 over the next couple of months we've already seen those lows already haven't we we've already seen those lows um, and that's where we will be in a few months from now, two or three months from now. That's where that moving average will be. So we understand it. Well, we know why it's happening. Uh, it's not a pop situation like it has been in the dot com bubble, uh, dot com bubble or the financial market, uh, housing market. Uh, pop in 2008 with that recession we're looking at a different type of recession based on global supply chains which is going to be slower uh, and not quite as dramatic which means that the same uh, analysis should really be applied to the charts which is simple um, resistances simple supports on the way down uh, which ones break we look for the next ones and then we generally look at history and say well okay well, well you know in the worst case scenarios where did we go down to we came down to these levels uh, due to these moving averages and they were definitely a decent opportunity of them uh, outside of that we think about what chart we're we buying into is it an up only chart okay this one is bitcoin is okay well you need an entry point in order to take part in that market you better get in uh, right now we're at a fair value within a within a range of potential 30 percent lower from here but an astronomical percent higher so risk to reward remains um, pretty much outbalanced in favor of bulls so and just put it into perspective the word recession is going to be used many times and that word recession people will start to think about this or this and they will th say this happened and this happened but recessions happen for different reasons this was a, a horrendous recession uh, caused by a massive a huge huge pop including trillions trillions and trillions of dollars and then the repercussions of that nation uh, worldwide we're not looking at that now we're looking at something different we're looking at something slower it'll be more drawn out but we're not looking at the same uh, degree of losses at the same speed we are looking for some serious pullbacks across the board from the peaks to the bottoms uh you know 43 percent okay fair play but we're not looking for a calamity event like we what we had in the past there are safeguards in uh, in place for these sort of things we know why the recession is happening or why it's going to happen and we also know the figures so far look quite good for at least the US for inflation to be considered to have peaked next month which means that that's what the markets will respond to anyway with that said I'm going to leave it with you there uh, Bitcoin on the short term time frame is still is very much the same as it was uh, at the beginning of the week we're still stuck within this range 10 exponential is our main area of um, 
of uh, resistance that needs to break and then it will move to the top of the range we're talking just below uh, 32,000 if we can break that then we might back up into these areas but the main battle is is that area uh, that's 10 exponential which is about uh, 30,600 uh, 4 hourly 50 exponential moving average we're finding a, a lot of resistance around here but the more time you tap a resistance the more likely it is to break uh, so I am actually looking for this area to break and that, that again should at least take us to the top of the range uh, so close to 32,000 and then we'll see what kind of reaction we have from there that is a strong horizontal that we've got there now if you really wanted to I could show you this as well which again yeah it's it's, it's it doesn't give you any it's it's still the same 50 50 you know who's going to hold support versus resistance kind of situation but we are looking at a, uh, a symmetrical triangle which again is a 50 50 situation the reason I think it's going to resolve today is because we're close to a 70% uh, on the way through this uh, formation normally you would expect it to break around this point Point now so I am actually looking for a break um, today and uh, that break should take us up to here to begin with see if we get rejected from there if it does then we'll, I would expect back down to the bottom of the range like a fake out anyway because this again is you know we are in the, in the midst of a downtrend still not looking for massive big moves but if for whatever reason we got out of here then yeah I think the mid 30,000s would be our zone sorry for the squiggles and this 200 um, exponential moving average on your four hourly would be the main area for resistance I would say I think that's what we'd be looking at so if we were lucky enough to break outside of this range and into this zone uh, over the next few days if we were to resolve this to the up this would be the next major zone and it's, it's obviously it's going down each time so we're looking for towards the um, you know the, the mid to just lower than 35,000 I would say uh, for a resistance in the short term and then obviously you know we, we are looking for this to meander go sideways and potentially further down but i'm not saying that this you know, this low can't be matched uh, it can and if, you know based on the long-term time frames we are looking at a 22,000 if it were to happen sooner rather than later but if it takes a few more months, uh, this could have actually marked the low. We could come down to revisit it, but by that time, the moving averages on the long-term time frames will have crept up, and that's, that, that would have brought us up to around this low. So we could end up double bottoming around this low, around 25,000, 26,000, depending on the chart that you're looking at. Tether's a little higher than dollars, but, um, but yeah. So there you go. There's your daily dose of hopium, and it's all based on TA and also historical uh, situations based on previous recessions and why they happened and what it is that this recession refers to and why it's happening so we can understand the differences between them. The word recession is, uh, is you know, it, it just means a, a, a decline in growth, GDP. And that's what we're getting. And we know why we're getting it. It's not a bubble pop. It's not a crash. It's not a, it's not a crisis. It's just a, a slowing of growth. And that's going to be reflected on markets. But usually by the time the word recession is effectively branded on something, it's close to if not have already marked the bottom so we're close to it we're very close to it and I, I do not expect anything significant to happen at this stage I think the majority of the pain has been felt across all markets and it is really a time to uh, start to think about getting back into them to a larger extent uh, with every time we come down by at least another 10% for Bitcoin and, may, and certainly another 10% for Nasdaq these are opportunities that come uh, probably once every 10 years or so right thank you for watching hope you have a nice day Take it easy.